And if you poke around, there's some things that you, you might not notice at first. Um, so I'm going to try to hit some of those things. Um, but basically, the area up here is where you put your notes. So, and if you hit space, that will play it. Um, and also, if you're not focused on this, you gotta be careful if you hit space, it'll go down there. So, you gotta click in here, and that makes a little note. And you can just click around, get some different notes. Sorry. Um, if you click and drag on a note, you can make it longer or shorter. So, you can do that. Um, and that is how you do the music for, for this. And uh, over on the side here, we have some different settings. Um, one of the cool things about this program is that you can set what key you want. And if you're not a music maker, you might, you might not even know what that is. Um, but uh, the key is sort of like what notes you're using in the song. So if I change the key, it'll change the pitch of the sounds. And then you can also, um, it's got this scale, which is it, kind of a really simplified terms. It, you know, music, you got all these different harmonic and minor and major and stuff. Um, so over, easy is, um, I think just, it's got a smiley face for major. Um, and a frowny face for minor keys. So, um, and then they also have, I think easy is just like straight up, like major and minor, and then island is just like, I don't even know what, um, it, might, it might be a mode or something, I don't know, but it, it'll sound a little different. You got a blues scale, normal. But if you notice when uh, you change these, um, the notes that you can actually pick change. So it's basically just taking out the, um, the notes that wouldn't fit in that scale. So it, it's real nice, it makes it easy. If you don't know anything about music, you can easily just plop down notes and it should sound like kinda all right, because nothing will be out of key. Um, so that's that's kind of a cool thing, um, and then you can you can speed or slow down thing uh, the song with uh, the tempo here. So that's just basically how fast it is. Um, you can add some reverb, which is basically just echo. Um, and then. If you want to get more advanced, there's some different um, rhythm settings, and <clears throat> that will change what what kind of notes you you can have, what kind of number or pattern you get. I thought it actually changed the. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention, if you, uh, you want to delete a note, you just click on it. So you just click to place one, and then click to delete it. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, so yeah, if you change the rhythm, um, it starts out as four. So you'll get four, the, the, the smallest amount you can get in one like beat is four. But if you change it to eight, then you can get smaller with those, and if you do six, you can do six increments. So it's pretty, it's pretty simple to just get in here and start making stuff. Um, down at the bottom is where you can arrange your song. Um, so like this is one pattern here. Um, all you do is there's little arrows here that you click on, and you can cycle through different patterns. So I can make another pattern on two, and and then down here you can select how long your song is by clicking and dragging. So if I press play, it'll play um, 
two, and then my pattern one is here. And I'm just going, mm -hmm. you just go between those by clicking on them. Actually. So I can make a bunch of different patterns and uh, arrange them down here to play in different orders. What about the yellow and orange areas? Below here, these? Yeah. That's different. So there's, there are um, three different instrument channels. Yeah, you can have, <clears throat> and I was just about to mention the instrument settings are down here. Um, and so I can change to different sounds. So like I have the square on this one. And so if I go down to this row, this is another channel. So it's got its own set of patterns. So I can make this one be a different sound and put some notes in. And then it's going to play, if I hit play, it's going to play this pattern with the other one. <laughs> so it's going to sound terrible because I'm just plopping stuff down. But, um, so you can have three different sounds, basically. Um, and then the bottom one is drums. And the drums are kind of weird in that uh, they don't have notes necessarily, but you have like a, oops, let me just turn off, turn off these. So zero is nothing, obviously. Um, so the bottom note is like a kick drum. And it's sort of, it's sort of like the pitch. Um, so the top ones are more like cymbals or snare kind of sounding. But it's the same way you can uh, make shorter or longer things. So it's pretty easy to make a little beat. Um, and you also have. Um, some choices on what your drum kit sounds like. So there's retro, this is white noise that we started on. Bang. That's an interesting one. So um, you got some options there. Oops, it wasn't in there, I guess. So, um, you have those three channels in the percussion. And so let me get back to the instruments on the regular channel, on the sounds. You have two options for uh, chip and FM. Um, I'll just go over chip real quick. Um, you've got all these instruments here, different waveforms. Um, so this, this is more, uh, it's gonna sound very like 8-bit. And you know, like Nintendo sound, um, that's pretty much all you can get out of this. But if you like that, this is a great thing for it. It's nice and simple. Um, there's uh, this transition, which is kind of hard to tell, but um, if you have a couple notes next to each other and you pick like slide, they'll kind of slide into each other. Um, smooth. All, all of these just have to do with how they, you know, go from one note to the other. Um, if your you know, musical term would be like articulation. Um, so the sudden is more short. And, um, and then there's a filter, which kind of makes the sounds sound a little different. And they're just like the uh, scale. It's sort of like easy to understand, like how it might sound because um, of the terminology they use. Um, and then there's some um, chorus, which is kind of fun. Um, there's this fifth, and that automatically kind of gives you a little harmony with it. Um, same with the octaves, it just plays a note an octave up. Oh. Sorry. It's one, one annoying thing about this program is uh, I like to hit the space bar to stop and pause and it's not always in there. Um, 
So you have some settings and you can add some effects also. There's um, vibrato. I don't know, it's not real obvious on this one. Um, so that's basically it. You have, it's, it's a limited amount of, you know, different sounds you can use, um, but there's still a lot of versatility. And like I said, there's the FM also that gives you a lot more options, but, um, and I, I haven't messed with this too much, but you can tweak sounds a lot more. <coughs> Yes, frequency modulation. So uh, it's a synthesis method that's used in a lot of synthesizers, keyboards, and there's all these just different things you can tweak if you really want to get into like different, making your own sounds. So obviously this is something you could probably spend a lot of time messing with, so I'm not gonna spend much much time on it. Um, one other thing um, that I wanted to do show is uh, what it does is every song that you make, there's no like save. Um, well, you can so you can export your file to a, a wave or MIDI or even a JSON file. Um, and there's some settings here on that. But if you want to like save the, the file itself, so maybe you want to come back to it and, and edit it later, it just saves in the URL. So you have to copy and paste that URL into a text file or something. That's what I do, at least. So I will just, OK, I guess I messed it up. I'm going to just bring up a couple of examples real quick. That you wrote? Yeah, so this is one I was just messing with uh, last night. Um, um, and one other thing I wanted to, a couple other things I wanted to bring up is you can do some um, note slides like this here. <laughs> It, to do that, you just let me click a note and then drag on it down or up, and so it'll slide from the one one note to the other. And so that's kind of fun thing you can do. Um, um, some other shortcuts also is uh, Z. They're down here also, but you can press Z to undo, just like a lot of programs. Um, not Control Z, but just Z. Um, you can hit Y or Shift Z. Um, then you can copy and paste patterns. You can use the bracket keys, um, these right here, to move around in your playlist. So you can see that that's where it's going to start playing. So if I want to go back to the beginning or go like later on, it's easy. It's a nice way to <coughs> just skip around there. Um, the other thing is you can't really do chords in this, you can do chords, but um, to, by default, when you do two notes on top of each other, like these two, it does that little trill, which is, I kind of like, I use that a lot, um, but that's, that's by default it will do that. Now if you want to do actual chords, there was a way to do that somewhere. And how I'm forgetting. But some other things you might want to check out um, on the preferences. You can auto play on load, something you might want to do. Uh, auto follow track. I think that just automatically scrolls down here when, you're, when your song is longer. Um, show piano is helpful if you actually have made music, you know a little bit about it. You can actually see the note, the notes here. Um, you can highlight fifth notes, so it's just like the fifth step in the, the scale. It's helpful just to have that visualized. Um, show all channels. Oh, an octave scroll. So um, 
By default, you can't really scroll up and down on the notes, but you turn on that and you can go and do lower notes or higher notes. Um, turn on show all channels and then jump to like the yellow channel. This one. I have it on. Uh, scroll back up to where notes were. Yeah, go back to. Oh yeah, it might show them simultaneously. That's what I'm thinking. I don't have anything on that channel though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, oh yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, That's what cool. it is. Show the yeah. other channel on a different That's phone. I was thinking it was something else. Yeah, I haven't, I forgot about that. Yeah, so when I switch back to this one, it'll now show that note. So you can kind of see where your notes are in other channels. It's also pretty helpful. <coughs> Thanks, Wes. We're learning. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you want to scroll, you want to get like more octaves in your, so like higher and lower pitch, um, you probably want to turn on that scroll bar so you can get to that. Um, some other things, you can copy patterns just with C, copy and paste C and D. Um, you can shift all the notes up and down with plus and minus, so make sure I'm in here. If I would just shift them up a little, it's nice and it's a handy thing to have. Um, I think that's <clears throat> about it. Oh yeah, uh, custom song size here under edit is also a pretty nice thing that you might want to play with. Um, you can change, you can actually change the number of beats. That's what I was thinking the other thing did. So instead of having eight separate beats in this, I can have like six. So you basically change like your time signature if you're familiar with music. Um, it'll give your song a little different feel depending on what you do. Um, and then you can do more make your song longer in here. So by default, it's at 16. Now I've got 30, so I got an extra scroll bar that I can access. Um, let's just bring up an example. So I can show this one. Oh, one of the other things in here also, if you felt, felt limited by just three channels for sounds, you can add more instruments per channel. You can also add um, number of pitch <coughs> channels. Well. Yeah, pitch channels. There it is. So now I could do more more drums also. So now I have two drum tracks and six pitch channels. So you can have you know just more stuff. Um, but I like how they kind of they put all this stuff so it doesn't overwhelm you at first. Um, this is all like more advanced things that you might get into after making stuff for a while. So, this is one that I did a little while back. It's real simple, I just have the normal three instruments, I think, and drums. It is hard to focus into that. <laughs> to use the shortcuts. Um, but yeah, so you can make somewhat complex sounding stuff. I don't know. Like I said, though, it's always, it's going to be sort of retro sounding. try to just keep it simple in here. Um, I make music also with FL Studio. I don't know if anyone's heard of that, but um, if I want to get more complex, I usually just jump through that. So that's pretty much beatbox. Any questions? Um, all right, so, so what formats does it export to? Um, Wave, MIDI, and JSON. So. The, yeah, so it won't it won't do like MP3 or anything. You'd have to convert it or AUG if you wanted to. Um, I know a lot of I don't know if uh, what Unity prefers, but I think GameMaker um, it converts everything to AUG. Yeah, I think GameMaker does the same, but it, it wants MP3s or <coughs> something. Unity will take pretty much anything and just convert it to AUG for you. You can also change it to you know, import settings to. Something else as well. Okay. 
So, um, Basque Kiel is uh, kind of a similar thing. It's simple, but it also has, you know, it can get a little more complex. Um, this is the website. And there is an online version, but I kind of just prefer using offline versions when I can. Um, so it's, it's very similar. Um, you click to place notes. If you want to change the note lengths, you actually use the scroll wheel on here. So just scroll up or whatever. And then you got your um, sound down here. And it also has the scale thing. This one's got more musical terms in it. Um, so if you don't know what these are, you probably have to look them up. Um, but basically, it's the same, same as in beatbox. It's going to change. Um, the sound of your music. So it's, it's going to actually only give you those notes, you know, within that scale. Um, and then you also have the key. Um, also, space to play and pause. And then there's also the buttons up here. Um, this one is great because it also has a nice little um, tutorial that will teach everything. So I really don't have to go over anything. You can just open this up and go through this and you would pretty much know how to use it. Um, so yeah, you can, you can right click to delete notes instead of just clicking on them like beatbox. Um, it's got the scroll bar. You can also use up and down, whatever that. Um, okay, so then there's this actually has to, like kind of different tabs for different things. So arrangement is where you can place your patterns. So let's say I make this pattern, and then you can place it by clicking and dragging on here. And this is like your song. So if I want it to repeat, I have I can also click from one that's already placed and place a new one. Um, and then it's got sort of the same thing down here. If you want yours to be four bars, you just click and drag to make it longer. Otherwise, it'll just play this first thing. And if I want to add a new pattern, I just hit new. And the tutorial looks to keep popping up. Um, so now I've got another pattern I can click on and make new things. <laughs> and then, not great. yeah. yeah. It's going to be a mess. Um, this one you can, it doesn't do the automatic like trill thing <clears throat> that beatbox does. So you can actually play chords. Um, actually, let me get rid of this and have a few. Got used to doing that. Uh, so right click also, uh, just like the notes, it'll delete patterns in here. So you can have multiple tones at the same time. Um, and then you have your arrangement or your instrument tab here, and you can take different sounds. Uh, and there's there's a lot for a, for a pretty simple program. This has a lot of different sounds, um, and that's just so. There's MIDI. You got different drum kits you can choose. Um, so any any uh, channel you can change to drums or or like uh, sounds instruments. Um, there's chip tune, but yeah, you can see there's a lot, and these all have like several instruments underneath to choose from. So a lot more variety in this program, um, but it's still pretty simple. Um, also, you can. My oh, I'm on the wrong pattern. Okay. You can um, shift notes up and down with these plus and minus buttons. Also, another helpful thing. <coughs> um, and then there's some advanced stuff that you probably won't use very often, but um, 
you can uh, swing basically gives sort of like a jazz swing feel to your song. I probably don't even notice with this <laughs> pattern. You know what? Let me let me pull up something real quick. So this is the thing I made. Like, not real noticeable there either, I guess. I don't know. It's gonna give it a little jazzy feel normally. Uh, I guess it depends on your song. Um, you can bring in MIDI on this. Um, if you want to bring in uh, MIDI that's already made and play around with it. Uh, sound buffer is really just for playback issues, if you have any trouble. Um, and then reverb is gonna add a little echo but it puts it over the whole song. So there's not really like effects on each sound like uh, Beatbox has. Um, that's one thing I don't like about this program. Uh, and then if you want to get real advanced, there are, there's a little secret thing. If you go down all the way on the bar, this little button pops up to edit filter. And I had some issues with this not working right, so let's see if this, this basically changes, but it adds a little filter on your um, sound, and you can, you can move it back and forth and, and it'll record that, and then it'll play that on your pattern. Um, that's how you. That's how you would set that on your pattern. You just move around and then uh, go back to the normal mode. Same same way. Press down and then click on that. It'll turn it off. Um, the one thing it seems like it doesn't save that information though. So you have to kind of like just export it. And if you want to change anything, you have to go back in and redo it. Um, so that kind of sucks. Um, there's also volume right here. I didn't go over that, but you can change the volume on each instrument. Um, that's pretty much it. Think, yeah. Is it cross-platform? Yeah. It um, yeah, so this actually is for uh, Windows, Mac, and Linux. It's a Flash SW. Yeah. And there's also the browser version if you, some people like that better. Um, it's open source as well. Uh, I think there's something else. There's a, so it has a basic tutorial and there's also this tips and trick, tricks guide which um, has some more advanced things um, that are real helpful. Uh, I think I've gone over most everything. Yeah, it talks about the low, low pass uh, filter thing there. So if you forget how to do that, it will, it'll go through there if you go into the, that help section. Oh, and uh, exporting, um, you can save your song files, actually, like you normally would, not, not just as a text file. Um, and then you can export as a WAV or MIDI. And also it has XM, or ML. I'm not even sure what those are. But there's some options. Uh, oh, also you can change the pattern. You can basically your time signature here, um, so I can make more more or less uh, beats per pattern. So that's probably I don't know, not not really going to change. Uh, BPM is just like tempo, so I can slow it down or speed it up. Make it go real fast. <clears throat> So, um, you know, pretty much it's everything you really need to make, you know, simple kind of 8-bit stuff. Can you um, show another one of your songs? <laughs> um, I have not made a whole lot in this one. Uh, this is one I made for a little prototype game. I like swimming. This is a little octopus game. 
sounds. Uh, this is VFXR and it is also uh, open source and it has a browser version or you can uh, download a standalone that I think it's also for Mac and Linux possibly. Windows and Mac. Are you a Linux user? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's a uh, probability for me. It should work on the web browser. Yeah, you can still use the browser. I'm anti-JavaScript, sure. so I can't. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll just open up the standalone just to show you. But, so uh, this is this program's pretty cool to make kind of 8 bit sounds and. One thing uh, that's really great is it's got all these things you can tweak to, to get whatever sound you, you want, but um, what probably most people do is just hit the randomize button, and it just completely makes the sound, um, you know, totally ra randomizes everything. But also it saves all your past sounds. That might be what but that's kind of nice. Um, they're just automatically in there. So if you want to go back to a sound you made, you just go over here. And uh, you can find it, usually. The, the thing with the, uh, the browser version is that if you, you clear your cookies, I think it'll probably get rid of that. So that's another reason to maybe use the standalone. Um, so I have, I have like different sounds here in the standalone version. Um, but if you want to do your own things, there, there are like, uh, sort of like randomized also, but there's like pickup coin, laser, explosion. So if you just click one of these, it'll make something that's sort of in that vein. But it, it randomizes it every time. Um, and then if you, so you have this sound, if you want to replay it, you just hit play. If the mutation button is nice. If it's like some close to what you want, but you maybe you wanted to change this a little bit, it'll just keep tweaking things just a little bit at a time. But then you can just do it yourself also. So I could uh, the, uh, the sustain basically gives it a little longer makes it a longer sound. Um, a lot of this stuff is kind of self-explanatory, like punch, it just gives it a little punch. But there also are uh, tool tips that are pretty good at explaining things. So if you're not familiar with a lot of these terms, which probably most people aren't, um, those are helpful. Uh, but see, I can go in here and change the frequency, make it a little higher pitched. Delta slide's kind of fun. Right? And uh, so there's this button here that says play on change. If I don't want it to play every time I tweak something, I can turn that off and then mess around with things. Um, but it's kind of nice. Um, so there's a lot of different things you can tweak. Um, got some different effects like flanger and low pass. Big Crush basically makes it a little more like retro 8-bit sounding. Um, one, uh, so also you can, you can go up here at the top, we have all these different waveforms. So you can have the same sound. This is on square right now, but if I change the waveform, it's going to change the sound a little bit. Some more than others. <laughs> um, and also some of these things down here that you tweak, uh, like square duty, 
Uh, they only apply to certain waveforms, like this one's just square. Um, so it won't really have an effect. Um, that's why it's grayed out right now. Uh, another thing that is cool is you can mix sounds. So I can take this sound in the mixer tab at the top here. And I can, I can just pick one here. And then I can mix it with, say, this explosion. And it plays them both together. Let's maybe do something that's different sounding. So that's kind of cool. You can do um, up to five, I guess. And you kind of layer all the sounds on top of each other. And there's a uh, little uh, volume meter here, so you can make one louder or quieter to mix it. Um, but like I said, most people just hit randomize until they hear something that's close to what they want. Uh, this also you can export into waves. What? So to export all the waves. I thought I think that means it exports all the different parts of the mixer. Yeah. <clears throat> so just to clarify, this is more about making singular sounds, yeah. um, like the others are for composing them yeah. together. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, Beatbox and Busca Kyol are more for music. Uh, VFXR, Lab Chirp, and Audacity are more sounds. Oh, okay. Thanks. Um, yeah. um, so then you also can, you can, you can uh, save your sound file, like just like anything else, if you wanted to save it and maybe tweak it later on, you can save the, those actual files. Let's see. <coughs> I think that's about it on here. Um, I'm going to just open up FL Studio real quick. So these are all ones that I've made for different games. But these are all just from VFXR. And, you know, plenty of them I'm just hitting randomize, but some of them I uh, actually tweaked quite a bit. Um, I don't know, I've got some really noisy, weird stuff that I've done. <laughs> So those are, you can make some crazy stuff with, with it. Um, any other questions on that? So what, the thing you just showed was what? EFXR? No, the one after that. Uh, oh, that's FL Studio. Oh, okay. That's what I make music in. But like it used to be called most, Free Loops. Yeah, it was Free Loops. Now they're, they're trying to make it sound more, more fancy instead of serial. <laughs> um, so uh, the other one is Lab Chirp, and it's it's kind of similar to BFXR. Um, this is the website. Um, it's it's got a little more complexity to it, but basically you can. You can do mostly. Uh, it's not. It's not quite as user friendly, I'd say, as VFXR. Um, but it's got the randomized thing. And it. I have to say, it makes sort of. It makes a little crazier sounds than VFXR usually. So. What I've. What I wanted to, um, well, I wanted to jump into Audacity for a second just because uh, I can see it being useful for. Um, this was a, a sound that I, that I came up with. I think it was just randomized, but I was, I was like, that's weird. I kind of like that part at the end, though. 
So something you might use uh, Audacity for. And I don't know what. <laughs> I am not sure what happened there. <laughs> Those are supposed to be docked to the top. <laughs> yeah. I, I just want to jump in here real quick, though. Um, so I exported the uh, sound. Just go to File, Export Wave. Um, so I've got the wave, and then it asks if you want to uh, make a copy or whatever. Choose whichever one there. That's weird. Uh, the volume on the side of the play button in the middle. On the bottom. Up here? No, down. Oh. In the middle of the toolbar is in the middle. <laughs> oh, right here. And then down, about there, that, yeah. that volume oh. is down. <laughs> oh, oh, that's yeah. the playback speed, sorry. I thought that was volume. Oh. Okay, I don't know why it's not playing it on the speaker, but. Arrow keys. <laughs> oh, it's probably that, negative 12, maybe zeros. Yeah, playback level. <laughs> Well, we just broke everything. <laughs> let's let's just try this again. Honestly, I don't I don't use Audacity a lot, but it's free and open source as well. Um, so I do I do this kind of stuff occasionally with it. It's just playing on my computer though. Yeah, it's not like it's not using speakers. Yeah. Oh, uh, at the top. I know it says speakers too, by definition. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, at the very top of the middle, there's a drop down. Yeah, that drop down. Oh. Change that to the display. Okay, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, I just wanted that, this little end part here. So um, it's simple. You can just click and drag everything else and hit delete and just get that part. Click view, of, Click view then toolbars, and reset. Oh. And that'll fix here. View, view, toolbars, reset. Hey. That's what it should look like. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. So um, that's something you might you might just uh, use Audacity in, in combination with these programs to, to kind of like further edit the sounds. Um, but then um, Audacity also has um, different effects and things you could you could add like um, some echo or whatever phaser. Uh, you yeah, have to select stuff for phaser. Just, yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to apply something quick. No, you have to select the waveform mm -hmm. parts. You don't have to oh. select it. Gotcha. Okay, select all first. And that's for most. Where was I? Phaser. Okay, I don't know what it did, but <laughs> you can. Phaser is like a wow, wow, wow. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. It kind of adds a little uh, modulation to it. Um, but you can add some echo or whatever. Um, so if you can't get that in VFXR or. Um, LabChirp, you could, you could go into there and add some things. Um, anyway, so LabChirp is. A bit more complicated. You have uh, several different waveforms that you can have in combination. So you can see the the waveform here. Um, just by changing those, it's going to make your sound pretty different most of the time. Um, you can also have multiple different channels playing different sounds. <laughs> um, so it's uh, it's a little more it's it's a lot more complex, but you can do even more with it than VFXR. Um, if you wanted to like layer different sounds together and get different sounds like that. Um, Okay, so this one, um, 
with those, with uh, besides the waveform, you also have frequency, which will make it like higher pitched or lower pitched. Um, and that's on each each of these different uh, waveforms. So um, you also have the volume of each, so you can kind of mess with that. Um, you can change the length here. I guess it was really long before. Um, And then you can also mess with the envelope, which is sort of like the uh, the volume over time, I guess is the way to put it. That's the frequency, so pitch and stuff. Oh yeah, sorry. That is. So I can have have it sort of like ramp up and then get quiet. I'm not sure if it's working, but that's sort of the idea. Oh, right, there's the other ones. Well, no, they're turned down all the way. I honestly haven't. I haven't played this one much, but there's there's kind of a, there's a lot to play with, um, but just for the randomizer alone, it's it's pretty useful um, to get some crazy sounds. And you can you can also limit your the randomization so you can turn off different ones if you don't want like say noise. Um, and I think that is about. It with this, there's different quality settings um, and some other things that are a little more technical. Any other any questions on on this one? I'm sure. When you randomize in this one, is there a way to limit the length that gets produced? Um, it feels like length. Yeah, yeah. It has a range for each uh, setting, mm -hmm. so yeah, you could turn this way down. And that's probably why all of them were really long. <laughs> so if you want shorter sounds, yeah, you probably want to do that. Mm. Sounds like a kind of a door latch or something. I thought it sounded like something very solid hitting the ground. Like this one. Yeah, kind of a splat or water. Yeah. So um, yeah, I don't know. Some you can you can get a lot more variety of sounds with this. Um, and like I said, it, it's kind of complicated, so you just mess with the randomize. It's, I think it's still pretty useful. <clears throat> Is that, anybody questions besides that? All right, that's pretty much it. Um, you know, hopefully you guys will, uh, you know, take a chance, check out these programs and experiment a little. Uh, it's really a lot of trial and error, <laughs> I think, to just kind of get, get used to these things and get better at it. Question. Yeah. Can you show off a game that might have bats in it or something? <laughs> For example, just off the top of my head. Uh, I might have a bat game. Are you okay. serious? <laughs> I don't have sounds in it yet, so that's uh, part of the reason I actually need to start adding some sounds. But this is just something I made real quick um, the last couple of days. Anyone use Game Maker here? No Game Maker? I could show you a game where I made sounds though for it. Can you do that too? <laughs> where did the bats request come from? Because he saw he saw this oh, the other way. Okay. I see. Yeah, this is this is my bad game right now. I actually added a little thing here. You can pound you should move the sound that was just created. Right. Yeah, that's I was thinking I might I might actually <laughs> I might actually use that sound. That's pretty cool. <laughs> So yeah, this is, this is my little bad game. Of I added, course you can say it. 
put some stuff cool. to but make it uh, feel a little better. Reminiscent of Echo the Dolphin on Sega. Ah. <laughs> yeah, that, thanks. I mean, that I felt like that had pretty good controls, so. <laughs> So yeah, bats. Um, I, I'll go, I'll show you a game real quick that I made um, last year that I made sounds for. I should have just played the EXE. I don't know why I'm even doing this. <laughs> yeah. it just to get. Takes a while to build. And this isn't even that big of a game. But, uh, I guess I turned it down too well. So you can probably tell these are BFXR sounds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but this is a game I made last year that for low res jam. Now the music, I did not make any of these programs, I made it in that FL Studio. So Sound effects. I say, I say you're a cheater. I'm a cheater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Anyway, thanks all for coming. He uses milky. Sorry, I just two things real quick. Yeah. The first one, you keep mentioning this FL Studio thing. That's what you use. Like, why are you just showing free software? Is that why you didn't want to show it off here? Like, yeah, and it's it's a lot more complicated. Okay. Um, it's also not free. Yeah, it's like a hundred bucks or something. Um, but it is a it's a lifetime update, so it's kind of it's not a bad deal. Um, you can also buy sound packs. So. Yeah, like more instruments and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, instruments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the cool there, thing there is a trial version of it that you can. Get that is unlimited trial, but you can't actually save anything. You can export it, but you can't save the file to edit it later. So for a game jam, it might be usable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it might be. It it's a lot more complicated though. Um, the it's a lot more complicated. I'll, I'll actually open. So this is a uh, the song. This is a song from that game. The the theme. But you can see the, uh, the this is where your notes are. Um, you can you have like a little keyboard. You can plop down notes on, and you can change the volume and different different things. So this, there's just a lot more to this program. Um, you got. Any kind of sounds you want. I've got all of these millions of sounds here. And then you can put your arrange your song here in the patterns. I think if it's still there, if you right click on one of the instrument names, the buttons on the left, uh, it has piano roll. Uh, right. Yeah, so this is piano roll here that yeah, I've got on this one. It used to let you actually play on the keyboard. Yeah, you can. Arrow or keys, the letters. And yeah. You would actually play like a piano. Well, it doesn't. I think there was. Oh, maybe a I had to turn it off. I, I might. I, I might have messed with it in like ten years. Yeah. So, <laughs> but that was something you yeah. used to be able to do. Yeah, a lot of people use that. But in, and then each instrument has like a million different settings. Also, it's just a ton, <clears throat> a ton of stuff. And, and honestly, it. I've been using this for like fifteen, almost twenty years, and I still only use like ten percent of the program. <laughs> There's so much to it. 
There's, uh, you can add effects. These are all like the mixing channels. Uh, you can attach it's, pianos. And it's a full-fledged DAW, so, I mean, yeah. But, you know, it's the, the song, one of, the, one of the songs I made for that game. And you can see just how complicated it is. I mean, there's just like, I have like 30 different things going on at the same time, so. So yeah, it's not beginner friendly. This is meant to be more, yeah, I was just more beginner friendly. So anyway, yeah, thanks all for coming. Thank you. Cool. Okay. So um, next month we uh, it's probably going to be on. I think the is it the second or third? Um, first or second. Okay. First or second of next month? Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. And we're talking about having the topic be um, kind of back end as a service for uh, game development, game developers, where you could possibly make like a web a network enabled game without having to do a bunch of network code. Um, or just at least like hot saves or something along those lines. Uh, that it might not end up being that. Because I don't know that we have a speaker, unless I want to put a bunch of work in. Um, does anyone have a topic that they would like to see or speak on next month? That would not be that, or maybe would be that? No? OK. Yeah. Well, yeah. is anyone interested in that topic? OK. With two and a half, maybe three people? OK, that's cool. All right, then. Uh, Sounds like it's you. It, it might be me. Yeah. <laughs> well, and we had like a half-hearted. Okay. <laughs> well, anyways, yeah. Thanks for coming, and thanks to Riot for uh, and Dan for hosting us. Yeah. And thanks yeah. for staying late. And thanks, thank you everyone for coming. All right.